My name is Richard Strax, and I am an associate professor of interventional radiology at Baylor College of Medicine. And I'd like to talk about the subject of peer review and how it impacts quality. So as radiologists, we have people looking over our shoulders. We have people looking at the studies that we read. And that happens for various reasons. The CMS, the state medical boards, and hospital quality committees oftentimes look at our studies in response to complaints, complaints about poor quality. And their job is discipline and sanctioning of physicians. That's not what I want to talk about, but I want you to remember that because I want to come back to that a little bit later. Right now, I want to talk about the more common routine assessment of our cases, peer review. So there, there's an article that was published in the JACR in 20. 16 by Grenville, which reported the results of a survey of Canadian residents and fellows. It was a small survey. It surveyed their attitudes toward peer review, and an overwhelming 90% of them felt that they wanted to know more about peer review, and 70% felt that peer review ought to be mandatory. You can contrast that with another survey article that was published in the JACR in 2014 by Eisenberg. And this was, again, a relatively small survey of faculty from an academic institution and their view of peer review. And in that survey, almost half, 44%, said that their system of peer review was, quote, a waste of time. They also believed, more than half of them, that peer review is being done strictly to meet hospital and regulatory requirements quite a contrast. And so those were small surveys, but they suggest that older physicians may have less confidence in the survey, in the, in the peer review process than the younger physicians do. And in fact, we need to think about why we do peer review, what we expect it to accomplish, and to some extent, where peer review may be going in the future. So quality in medical care has been a consideration, at least since the time of Hippocrates, but more currently, attempts were made to institute better quality in medical care, at least since the turn of the century, since the early 1900s. The, uh, the Federation of State Medical Boards was founded in 1912, and that was an early attempt to establish uniform quality of medical care across the United States. But to get to more present situation, we can go back almost 20 years to the publication in 1999 from the Institute of Medicine and a report entitled To Air is Human, Building a Safer Health System. And this report brought headlines all over the place as it noted that tens of thousands of Americans were dying each year as the result of preventable mistakes in their care. And the Institute of Medicine followed up two years later in 2001 with their landmark study, Crossing the Quality Chasm, a new healthcare system for the 21st century, more comprehensive and really dictating a, a new system of healthcare that was going to be based on quality. The report starts out by saying that our healthcare system is letting us down. It's not providing uniform quality of care. It, it points out that the changes in medical science and technology are occurring so rapidly that the system is unable to translate that knowledge into practice and apply the new technology safely and appropriately. And the report advocates for patient-centered quality care to be the basis for evaluating our system and its practitioners. It's taken more than a decade for our healthcare system to catch up, but slowly we're moving toward the basis of using quality of care and physician peer review has become a key element in measuring that quality of care. So while the healthcare system itself produces barriers to quality, it's still the performance of individual physicians that's a significant factor in the quality of care people experience one-on-one. -on -one. Many of us personally or through family members have experienced the unfortunate reality firsthand. Doctors are fallible, the care they provide is not always optimal. And if we have a choice of doctor, how we select that doctor is a bit of a gamble. Many of us try to find doctors who are experienced,
but there is evidence out there telling us that a physician's performance tends to decrease with the increasing number of years in practice. So the fact is, we have to rely on our system to assure us of quality. The question is, is the system doing the job? So that's the why of peer review, to try to assure quality. But what do we expect peer review to really accomplish? Well, we'd like it to accomplish quality. It's become an ingrained part of a quality assessment processes. ABMS, JCO have made assessment of physician quality performance a requirement for board certification, for hospital and healthcare system credentialing. Peer review is treated as a quantitative assessment of individual physician performance. After all, a radiologist at a workstation presents a unique opportunity to collect data due to the volume of work performed by a single physician. How's all the data used, though? Well, we can define quality of care in terms of the degree of interpretive agreement between readers because we believe this is a useful gauge of accuracy. We're trying to use peer review to assess the accuracy of each individual radiologist, whether a diagnostic feature was reported and interpreted correctly. We hope this performance assessment will result in the individual radiologist becoming more knowledgeable in areas of weakness, reducing their error rate. That's how the data is used today. Most often we use retrospective reactive peer review going over cases previously read by our colleagues. The beauty of this system is it can be built right into the software we use on our workstation. So it's an efficient means to collect data with little interruption in the workflow, hopefully making voluntary participation easier. Certainly this is appealing to the institutions that are under the gun to collect data because it gives them numbers to provide to surveyors. It's also appealing to software vendors who can charge for their part in this process. But this system has weaknesses. We're depending on agreement as, a, as, an, as accurate interpretation and that agreement may be subjective. Disagreement doesn't necessarily imply that an error was made. Either reader can be right or wrong. Case selection is narrow and it's not blinded to the identity of the previous reader. Bias then becomes an inherent part of the peer review process. People become anxious and defensive when they're told they may have a high error rate and the process quickly can become punitive. People don't want to voluntarily participate and this is not the ideal situation. Peer review really should be proactive. Case selection should be broad, random, and blind. And we have to remember that this collected data is important to the individual. Clinical performance data for particular radiologists may be used for credentialing, certification, relicensure, and even payment. The process is important to the individual being reviewed, so, and that adds to the anxiety that it produces. What's the effect of all the data we collect? Does it accomplish quality? Well, ideally, a procedure should be in place to allow these data to reduce the individual radiologist's mistakes, but unfortunately, the validity of this method of accuracy assessment is not well proven. And unless the data is shared openly and discussed with a group of radiologists, there's little likelihood that common pitfalls are going to be avoided by others. If the process is viewed as punitive, who's going to want to share their results with everybody else? Well, interestingly, the surveys I cited at the start may point the way to the future. While older radiologists see peer review as less than useful, younger practitioners see this as a valuable tool, perhaps because the younger radiologists have greater faith in the power of big data and social networking to bring needed change. So there's a really interesting article that was published in Radiology in 2011 by Larson and Nance called Rethinking Peer Review, What Aviation Can Teach Radiology About Performance Improvement. I think this article points the way toward the future of peer review. It makes the point that what we're really after is not measuring error rate of an individual, but the goal of peer review is to improve the overall quality of a group of radiologists. 
For over 50 years, the aviation industry has understood that meaningful quality improvement does not occur by finding individuals who make mistakes. Rather, it's identifying how mistakes occur, finding a way to avoid mistakes, and sharing that process with everybody involved. That is where quality gets improved the most. Our present peer review systems, which are increasingly built into our reporting software, focus mainly on counting discrepancies which are interpreted as errors attributed to an individual. This type of error me measurement feels punitive to the individual, and it does nothing to teach the group how to prevent future mistakes. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we already have organizations that are dedicated to physician discipline. Peer review does not need to be punitive. Again, from that article that I just quoted, it says, if the experience of aviation offers one piece of advice, it's that the philosophy of trying to decide who is wrong rather, rather than what went wrong prevents intelligent investigation into causes of errors and impedes the development of successful solutions. The future of peer review has got to get beyond the mere counting of individual errors and move on to group learning and error prevention. A combination of big data, finding the mistakes, and social networking, disseminating the solutions, might be the key to finding why errors occur and sharing that knowledge with all the readers. Peer review has got to transform into peer learning to significantly improve overall quality and contribute to better patient care. Thank you.